all across America and around the world. This is Veterans Radio. This is Veterans Radio. And now, your host for today's program, Dale Throneberry. And welcome to Veterans Radio. My name is Dale Throneberry. I'm a former Chief Warrant Officer, second class uh, helicopter pilot in Vietnam, 1969. We well, welcome you to our program today. It's our monthly benefits program. So if you have uh, signed up to try and win that jacket, you're going to have to stick around for the program because we're going to announce the winner at the end. So make sure that <laughs> make sure that you uh, uh, sign up for it. It's kind of late to, for today, but we're going to be giving away the flight jacket up until uh, December, at least as far as I know, and hopefully we will renew that agreement with U.S. Wings uh, at that time. But as I mentioned, today is our, our our monthly veterans benefits program, and this is for you, you the veterans, you the civilians out there. If you have any questions about veterans care um, at the, the VA facilities or if you have any questions about disabilities and other programs that are available to you as a veteran, this is your opportunity to ask my experts that I have here. So uh, if you want to give us a call, you can. The number here is 734-822-1600. That's 734-822-1600. Or you can send a question to me uh, by email. That's dale at veteransradio.net. Um, so before I introduce my guests, I've got two major events that are coming up, and they happen to be coming up on the same day which is kind of interesting. But this is uh, for local veterans in the Michigan, uh, central Michigan area. Um, number one is Thunder Over Michigan. It's back. And it's back with a vengeance. I'm telling you this. It's exciting this year. It's going to be on August 7th and 8th. It is out in Belleville, Michigan. Uh, you can find it. Just type in yankeeairmuseum.org, and you can find all the information about uh, what's going on at Thunder Over Michigan. But Thunder, the, the, I'm getting excited about this myself. Not only this year are they going to have the Navy Blue Angels, but they also have added the Air Force's Thunderbirds. So you've got both of the, the best aerial flight teams in the world are going to be in the same place. And they're going to be performing two days. There are four shows, two, day, two shows each day. Uh, the morning show is going to be the uh, Blue Angels, and the afternoon show is going to be the Air Force Thunderbirds. So we'll put it on your calendar and get those tickets now. Uh, that's that's uh, yankeeairmuseum.org, August 7th and 8th. And, uh, you know, when are you going to get the opportunity to see the Blue Angels and Thunderbirds in the same sky? I don't know. I, and I don't know if they've got some sort of arrangement figured out, you know, where they're going to be zipping back and forth at the same time. The other things that they're going to have for the afternoon show, well, let me back up here, Dale, calm down. The morning show is the United States Navy Blue Angels and the Air Force F-35 demo team. And in the afternoon, it's the Thunderbirds and the Air Force's A-10 demo team. So you're going to get to see some warthogs out there and all kinds of things. So again, put that on your calendar, August 7th, and 8th, 2021. The other thing that is coming up on the same day is uh, Michigan's Vet Fest. And this is the largest uh, veteran organization type of program available in the state of Michigan. They've missed the last couple of years, obviously, because of COVID. But they are coming back, and that is going to be on August 7th from 11 until 3 at the Fowlerville, Michigan Fairgrounds which is located on West Grand River in Fowlerville, Michigan. Uh, the Vet Fest, it says, is bringing you the largest event of the year in Fowlerville. This year marks the third year for Vet Fest, and it's available to all veterans and their families, and it covers uh, the, the Vet Life Organization is covering all the cost, but there's going to be all kinds of different organizations there to answer your questions regarding uh, benefits, um, there's going to be legal help there for if you need to put together a will or a power of attorney. There's going to all kinds of things are going to be there for you. And this is available, as I mentioned, on again on August 7th, runs from 11 to 3 p.m. at Fowlerville Fairgrounds. For more information, you can just go to vetlife.org. Um, 
and you can find out more information. It need, you do need to register early. Um, because you're gonna, you have to be registered in order to get into the program. And this is, um, this is really only for veterans, veterans and their families. So we, again, we encourage you to go out there. That's vetlifetoday.org uh, for more information. It says, uh, registration is required for entry and veterans will be asked to show a military ID or your VA card, um, at check-in to verify service ID that accepted our, um, uh, Says Department of Defense ID, VA Health ID, and if you have and if you have your state issued uh, veterans driver's license, that also works. If you don't have any of that, bring a copy of your DD two fourteen. That gets you into anything. So, two events to make sure that you put on your calendar. Number one is Thunder Over Michigan, August seventh and eighth with the Blue Angels and Thunderbirds, and uh, the Vet Fest at uh, in Fowlerville, Michigan, on August seventh. Oh, so please mark it on the calendar. That sounds like it's going to be a really cool, uh, kind of really busy, uh, weekend to do that. So that's out of the way. You know, but before we get too far along here, I got to make sure I thank our sponsors because without our sponsors, we wouldn't be here. And so I want to make sure that we talk about our loyal sponsors. Let's put it that way. Legal Help for Veterans, specializing in veterans disability claims. For more information, call Legal Help for Veterans at 800-693-4800, or you can go to their website, legalhelpforveterans.com. Uh, the National Veterans Business Development Council, better known as NVBDC, is the nation's largest third-party authority for certification of veteran-owned businesses. For more information, you need to go to their website. That's nvbdc.org, nvbdc.org. The Eisenhower Center in Michigan and Florida specializes in the treatment of veterans, first responders, athletes, anyone suffering from post-traumatic stress, uh, TBI, or close head injury. The Eisenhower is more than just uh, a neuro dis- uh, a <laughs> neuro rehabilitation center. They are personalized, multi multi-dimensional treatment. They are your expert therapeutic compass. They are working to ensure your outcome far exceeds your prognosis. To find out how their individualized rehab a uh, process can be transformative in getting you or someone you care about on track. Call the Eisenhower Center today. That's at 800-554-5543, 800-554-5543, or go to eisenhowercenter.com. U.S. Wings are manufacturers and distributors of what we consider the finest leather flight jackets in the world. Uh, they also manufacture and sell all kinds of other uh, military paraphernalia. Go to uswings.com for more information and make sure that you stay tuned today to find out who wins this month's flight jacket. And uh, then we've got the Charles S. Kettles VA Medical Center here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And our local uh, veteran service organizations, uh, the Vietnam Veterans of America Local 310, American Legion Post 46, and the VFW Post 423. Learn more about these great organizations and the services they provide, as well as how you could support Veterans Radio by going to our website, veteransradio.net slash our sponsors. Whew. Okay. Well, let me introduce our guests today. Remember, if you have any questions, give us a call, 734-822-1600. This has been a busy day, right? Lots of things going on. So joining me on the air right now from Legal Help for Veterans is retired Air Force General, uh, Caroline Falsone. Caroline, welcome back to the program. Good afternoon, Dale. I, I always get excited for the end of the month to join you and Michael um, to talk about ways that we could help our, our veterans and their families. So um, I'm excited for the show. Well, I'm excited that you're here. And I'm also excited, of course, when we have our local veterans uh, benefits guru, uh, Michael Smith, who is the director of the Washtenaw County Department of Veterans Affairs. Michael, welcome back. Yeah, well, again, I, I have to echo the words of uh, uh, my comrade, uh, Brigadier General Fasson. It's always good to join you and the crew at the end of the month and talk about benefits and, and, and ways that we can help our community in our veterans community. And um, there's a lot of ways that we do that locally, uh, that we do that here in the state of Michigan. And certainly uh, our federal government is there to take care of our veterans and 
their survivors and dependents. And we're in position to uh, make sure that they're accountable to our community. Right. Mm-hmm. General Fasson. <laughs> Absolutely, Michael. Absolutely. It's correct. Uh, we had, we just had someone drop a call. So I want to remind Ed to give us a call back. Uh, I had to, you know, I had to cover a couple of things, um, at the beginning of the program. So Ed, if you're listening, um, give us a call. We'll be more than happy to try and answer your question for you. Um, our representative for the, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Charles S. Kettle's veteran healthcare system, um, has, has not contacted us yet today. So I'm going to have to kind of skip those uh, the questions about the health care, except for, except for a couple, one, let me put it this way. Um, for those of you that uh, get your health care at the local veterans uh, hospital, wherever you are, uh, any, any deductibles that you were billed for uh, since last March, I believe it was, of 2020, you probably got a check in the mail for that amount. I got a small check. Luckily, I was healthy <laughs> during that time period. Um, but it does not pertain to your regular bill. So if you, uh, let's suppose that you got a hundred dollar charge at the VA and your copay was 20 bucks, you, uh, would normally, you should have gotten that $20 back, but you may get billed for that $80. And I know that they suspended collecting debts and so forth, um, for the year, but I've been talking to a couple of veterans who were getting bills uh, during the last year and a half. So uh, if you have any problems or questions with that, I would contact your local VA in the billing department and and see what's going on. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll try to answer the question. If you send it to us, we'll send it up the chain to get it to the people that need to, to see that. Because I thought there was a little bit of confusion out there because there were rumors, as we know, today's wonderful world of the internet and social media there were people saying oh you're going to get the check for your deductible back and then on october 1st you got to pay all that deductible back to the va and i don't think that's the case michael do you know, do you know anything about that well dale this is carol ann um one thing i will tell you though but i think it's it's good advice that michael will will also say um, we've got a couple calls in the last couple of weeks. Please um, remember that if you are receiving your care in the VA and you have an emergency and you go to a civilian hospital, you need to identify at the civilian hospital that you are a veteran and you, you receive your care at the VA so that you notify the VA that you are in a civilian hospital because you want them to know so that, you know, the bills will not be incurred by the veteran and their family, especially if you're in an ICU um, situation. Um, so I think that's really important. And there is a time frame. I tell them, notify the VA through the social worker at the civilian hospital as quickly as possible within the first 24 hours. So if you're in the emergency room, identify you're a veteran and let them contact, whether it's the Ann Arbor, the Detroit, the Battle Creek, or anywhere across the country, notify your VA um, medical center that you're a veteran and that you're enrolled in that VA health center. Because I think when some of the bills are coming back, there could be some confusion that was related to a hospitalization, not only medications or a deductible, Dale. Right. And the other thing I would add to that is to let whoever, you know, if you are have a spouse or significant other that they know <laughs> that you um you know, that if you do have an emergency situation, that they should contact, as you mentioned, the human resources office at the regular hospital to have them. Um, because somebody sent me a copy of a, this is not television, so I can't show you. I mean, I can show us because we're on Zoom. But, it's you know, it has an urgent care assistant card, assistance card here. It says, please bring this card to urgent care provider. Um, but it's not really a card. It's a sheet of paper. And so it's, it's important that 
that the veteran know that he can, he or she can get care anywhere in the world. No, they, no, they can. Oh, all right. Correct me here. Thank you. Go. So we're, we're talking about multiple things here. We're kind of inter overlapping. General Fasson is talking about um, <clears throat> some things that are very, very important. What you're talking about is health care anywhere, which is care in the community, which is not true. You can't get care in the community anywhere. It has to go through the VA's Office of Community Care. And there are certain providers in the community that have been vetted by the VA to provide that care. So it's not like you can go get care anywhere. I'm in Germany. I'm going to get care at the Tierkein or wherever in Germany and get reimbursed by the VA. That's not true. You have to get it approved. That, it, 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 well, no, the, the provider has to be approved and vetted through the Office of Community Care. Right. If they're not a provider through the Office of Community Care, then the VA will not reimburse you right. for care in the community. Okay. My, my question there was if I have a heart attack in Brazil and they send me to a, you know, a, an emergency room somewhere down there, do I, can I get coverage if I have to get permission for that? I mean, if I tell them that I'm, you know, I'm a disabled veteran or whatever it is, and they're going to bill me, but can I then send my bills off to the VA? So, so in, in that case, yes, that's under the the mill bill of 2000, which allows you to receive emergency care at some provider. And as General Fasson uh, referred, you have to let the VA know within 72 hours that right. you're being provided care by some civilian provider. It doesn't matter if it's Brazil, Portugal, France, Arkansas, <laughs> Oklahoma, it doesn't matter. Where, wherever you are, if it's some civilian provider providing you care, you as the veteran or family member have to notify the vet, the, the VA within 72 hours. And when I say the VA, I mean the VA healthcare system that within which you are enrolled. Yes. Okay. That, that, was, that. that was my, that was my not, point. Not, not notify the VA. I called the VA Veterans Benefits Administration and said, hey, Smith is down here in Brazil in the hospital. They don't no. they don't do health care. So you have to call the hospital in which Smith is enrolled, VA Ann Arbor, and let them know I'm in the hospital. And then they will determine if you are um, um, healthy enough to transport. And if you're in Brazil and you're sick, they will probably determine that you're not health and healthy enough to transport to get back here. And then they will authorize your treatment at that facility, wherever it is. So okay. but that's not what the uh, person emailed us about. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But that, I mean, that, that is the, 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 the question is, I think it's so important that there, there are so many venues that are available to veterans out there that they could use that, as uh, General Fasson mentioned, that they're not eligible for. And I know that Michael, you were, you mentioned that they have to be vetted by the VA, and I know that for the providers. regular regular treatment. Yes. But I, I, but I was more concerned with the emergency treatment. That was that was a that, question that, I had. Well, so emergency care comes under comes under a different authorization. So the mission bill covers care in the community. That's different from emergency care. Right. That comes under the mill bill of two thousand. That's why they call it the mill bill because it was passed in 2000, the Millennium Bill. And it refers to emergency care in the community and how to go about making sure that care is paid for by the VA. And number one, under either one, community care or emergency care under the Mill Bill, you have to be in, enrolled in the VA health care system. Right. That's, 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 the, ticket. that's the ticket to payment. You can't be a veteran that goes to the emergency room for some condition and think then that the VA is going to pay for it. And you're right. not enrolled in the VA healthcare system and not getting your care at the VA. They're okay. not going to pay for it. Right. Okay. We do. We have right. a call, call in right now. It's uh, Todd from Whitmore Lake, Michigan uh, is on with a question about healthcare. So Todd, you're on. Yeah. Hey, Dale. Thanks for taking the call. Appreciate it. Okay. 
So what is your under, question? The last administration, I mean, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I, I think there's fuzziness here. However, <clears throat> when uh, the last administration was, was giving veterans the ability to go wherever they wanted to, is this what we're talking about right now? Because uh, it doesn't sound like it all went through with um, the caller that you have on the phone. It sounds like he's in Germany, so on and so forth. So I, I, need, I guess we need clarification that veterans can or cannot go to just any doctor, but it still sounds like they have to go to a VA to be able to get stuff through instead of going to any doctor and then having it billed to the VA. I think that you just nailed it. So I'm going to have Michael is uh, shaking. They're both shaking their heads. Yes, Todd. So, Michael, did you want to take that one on? So, yeah, see, he's absolutely correct. There are two laws that authorize care in the community. One refers to emergency care in the community. That's the Millennium Bill of 2000. And there are certain procedures that... Uh, it just looked like I, he just froze up. So, um, Carol Ann, would you like to address that? Yep. Um, and I think Michael will come back in a second. We were just talking about that. The Millennium Bill in 2000, the, the two pieces of that, the emergency, if you have an emergency, go to an emergency room, announce that you're a veteran, call in within 72 hours, um, to the VA medical center that you go to. Now, with the Mission Act, and I understand with the caller what the confusion is under the past administration. If you remember the Choice Act, there was the issue that veterans thought they could just go into the community, go to their private, um, let's say, physician, and get care. Well, the VA wasn't picking up bills because veterans didn't realize you had to ask Mother May I first. If you recall that, Dale, um, bills weren't being paid for. So that was refined with the Mission Act. Um, and you, you now need still to ask, may I go into the community with the community, um, with the Mission Act, you go to your provider, and if a service isn't available within a certain distance and or if it can't be serviced to you within a certain amount of time, they will okay you to go into the community to receive services from a private physician, and the VA will pay for those services. So I, I hope, Todd, that clears it up a little bit. Your question. A little bit. It's still confusion. However, uh, I guess we have to work on this because we need to figure out where we can go besides the VA because the VA is always overburdened, understaffed, overworked, and there's a lot of, how do you put it, uh, well, Todd, may I ask you this question, please, sir? Um, and thank you for your service. Um, which VA medical center are you being serviced by? Battle Creek, um, um, Ann Arbor? It'd be Ann Arbor. There's, there's okay. a lot of, there's a lot so, of things that aren't going on around there as, okay. as well as around the country that we all know as veterans. So you have to understand that. Sure. And it, it depends on, now I know, I do know, cause, um, with Legal Help for Veterans, we're around the country helping our veterans. And in some areas, um, veterans cannot get their service. And if it's greater than 30 days, that VA medical center will authorize the veteran to go into the community under the Mission Act. And then they will pay for that service to be authorized. But all of that, Todd, has to go through that VA medical center. But the VA will authorize that. And that goes through your primary care team, your provider. Um, but it has to be documented and it has to be approved for them to pay for it. 
Okay. Uh, evidently Todd's call dropped off, but, um, hopefully he was still listening and got that information. So I'll play the devil's advocate here. Um, so if I, if I need, uh, to go to the VA, um, and they can't, and I can't provide me with an appointment within an X amount of time. Is that my understanding? If I need to have a procedure done and they can't get to me for three months and it's, you know, it should be done sooner. It, okay. So Dale, let me take a step back. We're playing devil's advocate. You're working with your primary care team and your, your primary care provider says, um, let me give you a good example. Derm. Um, you need a lesion removed and Derm says we're backed up for six months. Um, they go back to your primary care and say, we're going to refer you through the Mission Act through to community. We're going to approve that you go into the community to go to another dermatologist mm-hmm. and we're going to get this service done quicker because you need service tomorrow and we can't get you in within an acceptable period of time. But that goes through the Mission Act. It goes through your primary care team that they are now approving you and then the VA is going to pay the, for that service through the Mission Act for you to go into the community. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to take a break right now and then move into the more of the other benefits to, in the second half of the program. But if you have any questions, again, give us a call here on Veterans Radio. The number is 734-822-1600. So we'll be right back after this brief message. The Medal of Honor is the highest award for valor in combat given a member of the Armed Forces of the United States. There have been over 3,400 recipients of the nation's highest award. This is one of them. First Lieutenant John Fox called in artillery fire on his own position. Details after this. If you have a VA claim denied by the Board of Veterans' Appeals, contact Legal Help for Veterans at 1-800-693-4800. They're experts in handling cases before the U.S. Court of Appeals for Veterans' Claims. Their number again, 1-800-693-4800. On Christmas night in 1944, enemy soldiers in civilian clothes gradually infiltrated the town Fox and his men were in, and by early morning, the town was largely in hostile hands. An organized attack by uniformed German units began at 4 a.m. Being greatly outnumbered, most of the American forces were forced to withdraw from the town, but Fox and other members of his observer party voluntarily remained on the second floor of a house to direct defensive artillery fire. Fox reported the Germans were in the streets and attacking in strength. He then called for defensive artillery fire to slow the enemy advance. As the Germans continued to press the attack towards the area that Fox occupied, he adjusted the artillery fire closer to his position. Finally, he was warned that the next adjustment would bring the deadly artillery right on top of his position. After acknowledging the danger, Lieutenant Fox insisted that the last adjustment be fired as this was the only way to defeat the attacking soldiers. Later, when a counterattack retook the position from the Germans, Lieutenant Fox's body was found with the bodies of approximately 100 German soldiers. The Medal of Honor series is a production of Veterans Radio. Military veterans touch everyone's life. I'm guessing right now you're thinking of a veteran, a close friend, relative. Maybe it's you. Even the toughest of us sometimes need help, but don't know where to turn for support. You don't need special training to help a veteran in your life. We can all help someone going through a difficult time. Learn how you can be there for veterans. Visit VeteransCrisisLine.net. VeteransCrisisLine.net. A message from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Some information about the uh, housing grants. Hold on, hold on just a second here. (laughs) We're back here on live on Veterans Radio, and uh, we're talking with our two experts on benefits, uh, Michael Smith from the Washtenaw County Department of Veterans Affairs and retired General Carol Ann Fasson from Legal Help for Veterans. Um, The first half of the program, we spent a lot of time talking about health care benefits and what you may be entitled to and so forth. Um, 
I would suggest many of you that if you have a problem with your health care, you need to contact your local uh, VA medical center and either go through the billing or go through the human resources, from what I understand, is a great uh, opportunity to find out where you're supposed to go. Not looking for a job, but that was something that was referred to me. Michael's shaking his head so that he knows who we're supposed to call. So if I have a question about my billing, Michael, where would I go? If you have a question about billing, you can go to the Office of Community Care, not Human Resources. Okay, Office of Community Care. Office of Community Care, Bob, wherever you are out there. So um, we'll, we'll try to get these things taken care of. You know, right. the other thing, Dale, it just, and I know Todd sounded frustrated, uh, as a lot of veterans, we need to keep in mind every veteran's issue is different. Every veteran, even though they might live and go to the Ann Arbor VA Medical Center, but they might live a little more rural or they, you know, they might not have, we might not all have the same issues. So we really do need to, to go to and uh, address their issues with their team members of their team and ask those questions. Why are you not referring me? Or how come I can't get in sooner? And, and that, that hopefully will help them understand that they just can't refer everybody out. And there's the need for, um, some managing of these services. Well, I think it's important that you advocate for yourself. And the other thing is that, you know, try to maintain your composure when you're trying to find out what is going on with your care or, you know, whatever the scenario might be. Um, I know that uh, I've been very fortunate. My care at the Ann Arbor VA has been excellent. Um, I don't normally have to wait too long to get in. Um, not any longer than I did with my civilian doctors when I was doing it that way too. So I think there's a shortage everywhere. It seems like as a result of COVID. So, uh, try to be as patient as you can when you're trying to get your care. But your, your team, whatever team that you, you're, wherever you are, the vast majority of them are really professional in what they do. Uh, and, uh, so tell them what you need. That's all. That's a, they'll respond. If you ask them a question, they will respond. So hopefully that will continue on. Um, the question that we had for the benefits side of, of our discussion for today, there's, there are two, but I'm going to go to the one that I asked about is that if you are disabled, and I don't know what the percentage is, and I'm sure that you guys can fill me in on this, and you need to have your home modified for some reason or another, there are programs available out there. And so Michael, I was going to go right straight to you on that one. So if I, I'm disabled because of a uh, service connection and I need to put a ramp in my house. How do I, can, can I get funds to do that? So Dale, the answer to that question is yes. And there are eligibility criteria. Uh, three of the home modification housing grants are through the veterans benefits administration. The other one is through the Veterans Health Administration, uh, what we affectionately refer to as HISA. And I'll get to HISA last because that's the one that comes with the least amount of funding and it's, it's, it's only for sp specific reasons. Um, now, on the VBA side or the Veterans Benefits Administration side, if you excuse me, I have to refer to my other screen here. So, um it, there are um, excuse me, just one moment. That's all right. We're all messing around with our technology, trying to get everything so we can see what we want to talk about here. So, if you need to get your house modified, this is what Michael is looking up there. If you need to have, you know, a ramp put in or a, a handicapped bathroom or something along those lines. This is this is the question that we're addressing right now. So, um, again, Dale, there's under the Veterans Benefits Administration, there's the specially adapted housing grant. Yes. Okay. 
There is also the special housing adaptation grant. So sometimes those can can get confused because the VA likes their acronyms. One is the SAH or specially adapted housing grant. The other one is the special housing adaption grant or SHA. So the one that is most people are most familiar with is the specially adapted housing grant. It provides a maximum of grant of amount, a grant amount, excuse me, of up to $100,896. And it must be used for the purpose of constructing or modifying a home to meet adaptive needs. And veterans eligibility are these. You have to have the loss or loss of use of both legs. You're unable to move around without the aid of a brace, crutches, canes, or a wheelchair. You have blindness in both eyes. You have loss of one leg. You have loss of use or loss of both arms above the elbows, or you have severe burn injuries. So yes, um, to have these housing grants and that $100,896 grant is a one-time grant. And what they don't tell you here in their fact sheet is that there's a waiting list. There's only a certain amount of veterans per year that they grant this to. Mm -hmm. That is a recent development Mm -hmm. within the last four years, meaning four years ago, veterans could get this. And if they've met all these eligibility criteria, they could have it. But now the VA has restricted the number of veterans who can get this grant per year. So the other grant is the Special Housing Adaptation, or the SAH grant. That has a current max amount of 20215 It, again, is specifically to adjust a home that's already been modified under the other grant. And it's for anatomical loss of or loss of use of hands or arms below the elbow, severe burn injuries, or certain respiratory or breathing injuries. Now, if you've had either the special housing adaptation or the specially adaptive housing grant, you also may qualify for a temporary residence adaptation grant. That has a maximum amount of either 40,000 under SAH or 7,000 under SHA to do other modifications to the home. Now, the HISA grant is through the Veterans Health Administration. It's the Home Improvements and Structural Alterations Grant, again, HISA. And it's available for both service-connected and non-service-connected veterans. So the service-connected veterans can do home improvements, including ramps, up to $6,800. And non-service-connected veterans receiving the non-service-connected disability pension can receive home improvements of up to $2,000 under that grant. And lastly, this is an education grant. This is through the Veterans Readiness and Employment, or what we call VRNE, or if you're more familiar with the Vocational Rehabilitation Program, this is through Voc Rehab. It's one of the VRNE programs. And they can do home adaptations up to Mm $92,569. If your service-connected disabilities um, prevent you from being able to live independently in your home or to just be able to function, and you are in the independent living program through Voc Rehab or just a Voc Rehab recipient, these are another home adaptations that you can receive from the VA. So there's actually, again, two through VBA, one through um, VHA. And then lastly, I guess the, the education one is, is, is VBA. So there's three through VBA or four, excuse me, through VBA, and then one through the Veterans Health Administration. That seems like a, a, a great program for so many people out there. That, it is. You know, that need help. I, I, I was not aware of, of, of those things because I don't need them yet. Um, Carolyn, where would I go to find or to apply for these? Well, it's once again, 
forms through the VA. But let me tell you, okay, so the first one that Michael was talking about, the SAH, um, I got pretty involved with that one, the $108,000 one. Um, very complex with the process because people hear this and they think, oh my gosh, oh my God, I'm going to get this money. I'm going to be able to um, go in, do construction, get this all done. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. So they will assign you an inspector. You go out and once they say, okay, we'll approve your plans. Then you go out and get like several contractors. Um, the family that I dealt with, it took 11 months just for their inspector. And then, oh, by the way, um, their inspector got a promotion. So they had to start all over again with a new person to come in and uh, start with the project again. Um, they didn't lose all of their approvals, but it's very lengthy. And while that's going on, your veteran um, is still, and their spouse is still trying to adapt and trying to make the decisions. Um, do we care for the veteran in the home? Because that's the whole focus. If I could adapt the home, then I won't take my loved one to the nursing home. This was their big goal to keep the loved one in the home. Then the other thing with this is you think you're going to get this whole project done. And the sad thing with this one was when it was finally approved, the only thing they got done was the flooring to enable the wheelchair to to, to run smoothly through their home and the veteran passed away and everything else was stopped and the widow didn't understand that either because it was approved for the whole program. So I think there are some issues with this that, you know, sometimes we don't understand and um and so it was approved for 108,000 they only got the floor approved and done while the veteran was still alive um but the VA isn't going to give the spouse the remaining monies they she thought they were going to get the remaining monies um so that's still out there but she's not going to get the remaining monies cuz they're not going to do the rest of the house um right. So it's the forms. They will help you. Like Michael was saying, there, there's a ton of paperwork. You will be guided through getting the forms. Um, it's on the VA website. Um, it, it's, it's not an easy process, um, to navigate through. Well, what about one of the uh, smaller grants, Michael? Does that take as much time? Uh, for the for the approval process, I think the the um, the the HRSAs, the HIS, I think those come through pretty quickly. And I think um, some of those I have in the past. Now they might have moved out of the the VA medical centers, but I remember um, being able to go into a VA medical center and go in and get some assistance for veterans. Um, regarding construction. Um, one great organization that always used to help me was the Paralyzed Veterans. I think of Michael Harris. I would call Michael Harris and say, Michael, could you help with a ramp or DAV? And uh, they would be great with that and uh, helping with getting this moved along pretty rapidly. So, so the HISA grant through the VA Ann Arbor or through the VA Medical Center is, is, is done through the social work team and they will assess whether or not you're, are, are going to uh, be approved for a HISA grant. And that's, if it's approved, it's done through the prosthetics department of a VA medical center. Now, the special adaptive housing and the special housing adaptations and the uh, temporary housing adaptations and the one through the um, VR&E that are done on the VBA side, they're, they're not that difficult. It's one form, you apply, 
it goes to um, the, um, um, the the folks who handle all housing issues for the state of Michigan, which is Cleveland Regional Office. Jerry Weigold is one of the main persons in charge of that. But then there are two other folks in the state of Michigan who go out and they're assigned in, in, in regions. There's three people. Jerry's one of them. And they go out to inspect these homes that are requesting adaptation. And once they approve them, yes, they have vetted vendors that they will then engage to come in and do whatever adaptation that has been approved. Now, in the case of surviving spouses, General Fasona, that's an anecdotal situation. That's an outlier. Really doesn't pertain to you know the, the what happens every day in and out with these grants because the grant is not transferable to survivors. So any work that was approved that was not done when the veteran died, right, it's not going to be done after the veteran dies. So that's a different issue. And I don't want to focus on like that, that one issue that could happen to a survivor as opposed to what's available to all veterans right now while they're alive for their homes to be adapted. And it's, and it is a very simple process. We, we engage these, inspectors every day if they're scheduled to come out to see one of our veterans and they're not there i can call jerry i can email him through my va outlook account and say hey what's going on he said hey michael i know i was going to go out and and, and inspect this home tomorrow but or uh, but i'm going to have to do it on another day so i'm I'm always aware of what's going on with these uh folks in the va and, and and my people that need sah or um sah or s (laughs) HA <laughs> or the other temporary or the VH VRNE one. Um, so I know, yeah, there are times when it, there are problems, but not from the VA's side. My, my, my experience with these grants has been problems with the contractors that the VA vetted to come out and do the work, not so much the VA and doing their part to get it all going. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, it's a very simple process. The unfortunate thing about the process is when the VA restricted the grants to a certain number of veterans per fiscal year. That was the unfortunate thing. So the, so the, so the, that was going to be my next question. So the, so the, the VA has recommended contractors that you would work with. That's correct. So it's, it's just like with the hospital side of the house. You just don't go out and get, you know, Right. You know, Michael Smith construction. I'm going to come out and build your house, your dream house and make you <laughs> PA adaptable. Come on out and build it, Michael. hundred thousand dollars. Yes, sir. And then you go back and take the bill to the VA. They're not going to pay for it. <laughs> okay. Just like uh, you go out and get a, a cardiologist to do a hundred thousand dollar heart repair. And you go back to the VA hospital to get them to pay for it. And it going to happen. There is a process and procedure for all of these things. And veterans and survivors need to know that. And if they don't, don't engage a process until you talk to someone who can guide you through the process and who knows the processes and procedures and laws and regulations and forms and all that that goes in, uh, with the process. Yeah, don't, and don't try to do it by yourself. And that's what General Foss on every, every show <laughs> tells our, our listeners. Absolutely. And I, and I agree because, um, you know, when we're dealing with uh, a pretty good sized bureaucracy out there and there are so many missteps that could be taken by, you know, people that try to do things on their own. So, you know, be careful, ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. That's what they're there for. That's what all these veteran service officers are there as, as uh, Michael's pointing out, Carol Ann with the paralyzed veterans or the, or the disabled American veterans or the American Legion, the VVAs, all these different organizations out there. That's their one goal in life is to help you, the veteran or the veteran's family, to get what you have earned and what you are entitled to. So make sure that you do that. That's our paid political announcement for the day is to well, try so, and do so that. Dale, that that's, that's, that's a great announcement, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, and, and, and General Fasson knows this, uh, newly uh, added agent to the uh, VA Office of General Counsel. 
um, we, we have to go through a significant amount of training. Oh, yep. Okay. So when we're, we're giving you this information, that information could change tomorrow with a, with a, with a court decision, a new law change um, from Congress, a new regulation change from the VA. So, you know, um, I just went last week, attended my virtual conference of the National Association of County Veteran Service Officers. There were 100 people present in D.C., and there were 500 of us virtually online around the nation attending a training to obtain our 16 continuing education units to maintain our VA accreditations. VA Secretary Dennis McCona opened our, 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 our um, conference on Monday, and it was amazing to hear the VA Secretary address us. Not only was he there, but Tom um, uh, Murphy, Murphy. McMurphy, excuse me, the VA uh, Deputy Undersecretary, um, Cheryl Mason, the uh, chair of the Board of Veterans Appeals, addressed our association and many other uh, VA employees and uh, Deputy Undersecretaries. And um, those 18 hours we just went through last week was just a reminder that we don't know everything. And we had Katrina Eagle there telling us about three recent VA court decisions, or excuse me, um, uh, uh, federal court decisions from the Federal Court of of Appeals and the uh, Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims that will literally change the way we deal with uh, certain claims going forward in the future. So um, it's very crucial that we, uh, General Fasson and I, and and all of us out here in uh, veteran service world, um, that we know VA regulations, that we know VA law. Not only that, but we know um, court decisions, court precedences, and VA Office of General Counsel opinions that affect the way we do business every day and can affect definitely the benefits that are available to our veterans community. Right. So I, I understand from what Michael was saying that uh, uh, General Falcone is now a certified veteran service officer. Is that correct? Well, I haven't seen my agent. official agent, but I haven't agent. seen my official paperwork yet. So stay it's all tuned. about the paperwork. <laughs> it's about that paperwork, which then I have to continue on with my training. And you're right, Michael. Uh, but that, you know, it's so very true. When, when I was talking about the adaptive housing, um, it was in a different region. So if I'm dealing with our region. I'm calling you to get that nice man's number, but was in another um, region down south. And, you know, they they punted me to Washington. So when I was talking to Washington, exactly what you said, they told me about the new rules and that they had a limited budget every year of $1 million. The amount was cut back and that when the money's gone, They cannot do any more programs. And they were telling me how much money they had already given out and how many um, awards they were trying to give away. And they were not going to be able to do that. And they were telling people to put in the claims again, you know, fill out the paperwork. They weren't going to have to go through the whole process. But the gentleman was very kind to me, but he was telling about all the restrictions with the budget. Dale, if one last thing I want to remind our community of, 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 of listeners is this. Um, if you remember back in March, I talked about the Washtenaw County Department of Veteran Affairs partnering with Phoenix Mobility Rising in conjunction with AARP Ride at 50 to provide free transportation for veterans their survivors and dependents in Washtenaw County. They, my staff have been trained by uh, Phoenix Mobility Rising. We have our own account and all you have to do is call our office and we will book you a ride through a network of community providers that are professional transport, transportation providers, including volunteers to take you anywhere you need to go in Washtenaw County and we will pay for it. The Washtenaw County Department of Veteran Affairs. Can you get that number out again? 734-973-5555. 734-973-5555. 
4540. There you go. Boy, Hold on just a second here, Carolyn. I got to get this in before we, we run out of time. The winner for the jacket this month from the U.S. Wings in Hudson, Ohio is George Renenza uh, of Boylesburg, Pennsylvania, a United States Navy veteran. Uh, was stationed in San Diego, California from 1960 to 1964. Again, it is George Vranenza, V-R-A-N-E-Z-A. George, we will be contacting you within the next 48 hours to get your address, size, and everything else. So thanks for entering, and make sure, for all of you that are listening, next month we're going to be doing the same thing at the end of August. So make sure that you can do that at this time. So we're down to one minute. So you guys, if you got a comment to make, you got 10 seconds to say something. <laughs> well, Michael, that's a great honor for Washington. And now we're losing her with 10 seconds to go. So it is a great honor that you guys were able to put together that program. So we can get um, so, people. So uh, we'll pass that out with our veterans and veterans in their. Okay. So the, uh, Veterans Radio Band has struck up again, as we can hear in the background. I want to thank Michael Smith from Washtenaw County uh, Veterans Service Office and Carol Ann Falson, retired uh, general from the United States Air Force and from Legal Help for Veterans. So thank you both very much for being on the program. We'll be back here at the end of August to let you know what is happening. We got to go right now. Just a second. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> so until next time. This is Dale Thromery for Veterans Radio. You are dismissed. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, avoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.